So one thing that I love about Bernie Sanders is that he's always been clear about his stance towards American oligarchs. He does not like them. In fact, you could say that he loathes them. And one time channeling FDR, he even said, I welcome their hatred. And I love that. He's always been that way. But as of late, it almost seems as if he has sharpened his criticism of American oligarchs. And it's making them very nervous. Now, let me give you some examples. So, he recently tweeted simply that billionaires should not exist. Point blank. And on top of that, in response to news that he outraised all of his Democratic Party primary opponents, he stated, The billionaire class should be very, very nervous. The working people of this country are ready for a political revolution. So, make no mistake about it. What he's saying to American elites is... I'm not afraid of you. In fact, I'm coming for you. So watch out. You've robbed us for decades and now we're coming for what is rightfully ours. So he's making all of these statements saying that billionaires should not exist. And of course, this is uh, very offensive to uh, billionaires. So they are going on the only platform that will give them access to voice their grievances about Bernie Sanders, of course, Fox News, and they are now whining about Bernie Sanders wanting to increase their taxes. For example, the former CEO of McDonald's, Ed Renzi, decided to actually throw the C-word around when describing Bernie Sanders, and no, not that C-word, I'm talking about communism, and I don't know how else to describe this segment other than saying this is a petulant child complaining about seeing a slight increase in his taxes. We're going to turn to taxes. 2020 candidate Bernie Sanders announcing a proposal this week that would take aim at companies that pay high level executives much more than the uh, median employee salary. If his plan has been, is in place, and it ha if it had been in place last year, JP Morgan Chase would have paid up $991.6 million more in taxes. Walmart, $793.8 million. McDonald's, $110.9 million more. Joining us right now is Fat Brands International Chairman and the former CEO of McDonald's. McDonald's USA, as well as famous Dave's Barbecue, Ed Renzi. And Ed, it is great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Glad to be here. I just want to I just want to read you the, uh, the the headline of Bernie Sanders tax plan. And he says this Sanders releases income inequality tax plan. The plan would increase taxes on greedy companies that pay CEOs 50 times more than median workers. That's the headline of the actual press release. Greedy companies. What's your reaction? Well, I don't have much confidence in anything that Bernie Sanders says, frankly. Uh, there, no corporation in the world pays taxes. They collect money from customers for good services and taxes. Uh, the customers will ultimately pay that. It's inflationary. It's ridiculous on its face, and he knows it. The Communist Party that's now parading around as the Democratic Party has got to stop this nonsense. We have a capitalist system, free markets. And they got to come to grips with that. There's no way Bernie Sanders is ever going to get elected. He's praying to make money or maybe become vice president candidate, but he's never going to get elected. He's absurd. The butthurt in that clip was palpable. And uh, let me just say this. His tears, they're delicious. <laughs> I loved every second of that. And I love how he's so sure that Bernie Sanders is going to lose, but I can't tell if he's trying to convince viewers that Bernie will lose or trying to convince himself that Bernie Sanders has no chance because um, he should keep wishing because if Bernie Sanders is president, people like him, they're actually going to finally have to pay their fair share. And that is long overdue, but they've been getting tax cuts. They've been able to control democracy and the economy. And it's about damn time that we get someone in power that's fighting for the working class and not the oligarchs. Now, the first dumb thing that he said was that, you know, no corporation in the world pays taxes. They collect money from customers for good services and taxes, and customers will ultimately pay that. So if you increase taxes on large multinational corporations, they're just going to pass that cost off onto consumers. Well, that to me sounds idiotic, because if you're going to increase the cost of goods pass that cost off on the customers, then you're just going to piss off your own customers, meaning that may be a bad business move. You're allowing your greed to further gouge your customers, and as a result, that could cost you money. Because if you piss off customers and you have, you know, no desire for your goods to be purchased, what happens? 
that hurts your business. So if you want to be a dumbass and increase the cost of goods if your taxes go up and protest of your taxes going up in hopes that maybe your customers will blame government, they're going to blame you. They will blame you. Trust me about that because I worked in fast food before and also retail, but whenever the prices would increase, it's always the corporation that gets blamed. Now, people who, you know, attend these, uh, these places, they like to voice their grievances with the workers who are making minimum wage and that's not cool. You know, it feels bad, but nonetheless, they don't ever say, oh, it's the government's fault that you raised taxes. No, they're going to blame you. So if you think you're going to be able to scapegoat government because you're too greedy, because your taxes went up, um, that's just a dumb, dumb argument to make. And it's not fooling anyone. Now, he also said, you know, the communist party that's now parading as the democratic party has got to stop with this nonsense. We have a capitalist system, free markets, and they've got to come to grips with that. Okay, so I've got multiple things to say about that. First of all, um, define communism. Because I bet that like 99% of the boomers who casually throw around the word uh, communism, he would not be able to describe it. Second of all, Bernie Sanders is a social democrat. He believes in a mixed economy, so to a degree he is a capitalist. To the extent that he prefers socialism to capitalism is irrelevant. He is, in part, a capitalist. He's not a communist. He's not even a true democratic socialist, if you look up the definition of that word. So that's just fear-mongering that is useless. Second of all, by throwing up your hands and saying, you know what, this is just how capitalism works, get used to it, peasants, you're not helping to build your case. You're just admitting that capitalism is fatally flawed, and you're confirming that we need to overthrow that exploitative and predatory economic system. So if you think that that's actually going to convince people that capitalism is good by saying this is how capitalism works, well, when we see how shittily it's working and how it benefits people like you and not us, you're just helping to drive down support for uh, capitalism. So keep it up because this person clearly... Uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he's just lashing out. Like, he's mad that Bernie is going to raise corporate taxes and institute a wealth tax, and he doesn't like that. Period. Now, another elite, a crybaby billionaire, more specifically named Ken Langone, who was one of the founders of Home Depot, worth an estimated $4 billion, made it clear that he's not too happy about this Bernie Sanders guy, and he should probably cut the malarkey. Sanders the other day said the U.S. should not have billionaires. No more billionaires. Are you gonna shoot me? Now, there are an increasing <laughs> well, number of billionaires in China. So is that what we want? Do we want all the money to go to you China know. and the billionaires? Are, and you said two cents. Let me just say what this is, because Elizabeth Warren is making a point of that. She says it's a modest tax. It's two cents on every dollar over $50 million in net worth. She says it goes up to three cents on anybody who has a billion dollars. People are calling that confiscation. It's on wealth. It's not income. Let's go back to Bernie Sanders for a minute. Oh, and what here's Bernie is, Sanders. What the, hell, what the hell has he done for the little people? What jobs has he created? Here's Bernie Sanders' press release. Sanders' plan would increase taxes on greedy companies. That's the press release. He says greedy companies. Go ahead. Uh, look, Bernie, Arthur, and I, and Pat Farris started Home Depot 41 years ago. We have over almost 500,000 people gainfully employed in that company today, all providing for their families, all building estates. We have 3,000 kids that started with us in the parking lot. That's the entry level. They're still with us, and they're multimillionaires today. Wow. Oh, oh, you oh, changed oh, so many people's oh, lives. <laughs> and they changed all lives. Yes. It was, a, it was a, a symbiotic thing. Bernie, stop being a blowhard. Show us, give us examples. You go for a job and you go to an interview for a job. Tell me your qualifications. Tell me, show me your experience in life where you've done this or that or the other thing. At least I'll be able to say, he's been there, he's done that, he can help. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> <laughs> that end rant there made zero sense, completely incoherent. This individual is evidence that if you're a billionaire, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will automatically be smart. There's a lot of really dumb rich people. Uh, Donald Trump is, you know, probably the quintessential example of that. But this guy wasn't making much uh, sense there either. He was basically just creating word salad because he was visibly disturbed at the fact that Bernie Sanders wants to impose a wealth tax on someone like him who has a net worth of $4 billion. To see him cry, oh, it just felt so good to watch that. 
I loved it. Now, the host at the beginning of that clip, she said people are calling that confiscation a wealth tax. It's on wealth, not income. Now, you can call that confiscation and I'd be fine if you agree to also call the exploitation of workers by billionaires confiscation as well. Because if Ken Langone did not exploit Home Depot's workers, he would not have amassed the wealth that he has. That in and of itself is a form of confiscation. He did not adequately compensate them for their labor because if he did, he wouldn't be worth $4.4 billion dollars now he also says what has bernie sanders done for the little people what jobs has he created and the way that basically they measure your worth as a human being is how many jobs you created did you create one job 10 jobs ten thousand jobs that's how they view you know your worth as a human being that's the only way that you can possibly contribute to society never mind the fact that Bernie Sanders has single-handedly elevated the issue of single-payer Medicare for All to a national level. Never mind the fact that Bernie Sanders got thousands of Amazon employees and Whole Foods workers raises unilaterally just by putting pressure on Amazon. Like, the only way Bernie Sanders would be worth a damn in this guy's mind is if Bernie Sanders was a business owner. I mean, these people are so one-dimensional. They're such one-trick ponies. And it's evident that they don't really have an argument against Bernie Sanders. And they know that the way that they argue against the wealth tax makes it seem as if they have this sort of a fuck you, I got mine mentality. So they can't just come out and say, don't you dare take my wealth. What are you talking about? They have to be able to code that and really veil it in some other language that makes it seem as if they don't actually care about their wealth, they just care about Bernie Sanders being antagonistic towards people in this country that are elites. He wants to take their wealth, and it's because maybe he's economically illiterate. Maybe it's because he doesn't understand the value of creating jobs. Well, all of that is wrong, and here's what I say to these billionaires who are whining about Bernie Sanders' wealth tax. Keep crying, bitch, because your tears are absolutely delicious, and when we actually do come for your wealth, excuse me, come for our wealth, because let me uh, remind you, they stole that wealth from you. Nobody can actually earn a billion dollars. They take that money. That's confiscation. So when we actually do take back what is rightfully ours, you're just making it that much sweeter, and I'm going to save these videos so I can come back and watch them, because uh, this is going to be glorious. When we take your wealth, I'm going to be so excited, and of course, I will rub it in, I will gloat, I will at you on Twitter, because I like seeing you cry. There's nothing that makes me happier than seeing a billionaire miserable, and that comes from a humanist who's against human suffering. But I'll make an exception when it comes to wealth and these billionaires. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>